good, right? If anybody hires you just because you look good, you simping big time. A male's pretty privilege and versus a woman's pretty privilege. The Omorion versus Mario. And just in case y'all think that I'm being like a hater, I will show y'all some clips right now. You guys are problematic. You guys are toxic. I might hurt some feelings or might trigger some people. Honestly, I really don't care. Here we are. Yes. Now, 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 now. I don't have not one excuse for you. I just up and left and didn't get no heads up like always. So yeah, there's no excuse. I really have no excuse for you guys. <laughs> but I'm back for how long? Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, you know, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> Never know, you know, like. Just roll with it and you will see, you guys. So if you guys are into opinion, opinionated, wow, I can't talk for shit. Opinionated um, videos, whether it's social issues, relationship stuff, whatever it is that I feel like I wanna talk my talk, I'm going to do so. If you guys are into that kind of content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and press that bell button so you know when your girl posts. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at just.thebrat underscore. Now we can really get into the tea and what this video is about to be about. And today's video is gonna be about pretty privilege. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and I just, I honestly just wanted to give my two cents and opinion on this topic. So, when you guys look up Pretty Privilege on YouTube, there are multiple, and when I say multiple, I mean multiple videos. So, I decided that I wanted to get in on this conversation. So, for those who do not know what Pretty Privilege is, I have the definition right here, and I'm going to read it to y'all. Pretty Privilege is the concept of people who are deemed more attractive based on accepted societal beauty standards. And with this upper hand... Certain people may be rewarded with many opportunities that average looking people, or to some may say unattractive, does not have that same advantage. So I feel like that definition was straight to the point. If to society you're, you're deemed pretty, you gain more things, or things may come to you more easy compared to from a regular schmegular looking person. Oof, where to start with this? For one, I want to say that pretty privilege is not just a woman's experience. It's men definitely experience and benefit from pretty privilege as well. So I'm gonna just give y'all a little examples of male pretty privilege that I've, that, I, that I've came up with and kind of witnessed. So boom, you guys remember a couple years ago when that, hold on, I'm gonna describe him, I'm gonna just describe him real quick. When that light skin, light eyes, when he had the, the, the teardrop and his mugshot went viral on the book. You know who I'm talking about, right? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Well, that man's name was Jeremy Meeks. And let me give y'all the, the facts, the facts of the facts that I found. The police department posted his mugshot on Facebook in 2014. And I remember this, you guys, because I remember um just going super viral on Facebook. I was like probably a, maybe a freshman or the ending of my eighth grade year. Wow, I'm young. <laughs> so in 2015, Jeremy Meeks was released and he started, he got into modeling. He's done things like walk the runway during fashion week. He was a fashion over model, and he's even done movies. I know one of the movies was in BET. I forgot the name. I personally did not have not watched the movie that he was in on BET. I feel like all his roles, though, he plays like gangster. So like that's true to his who he is, like a, a thug. You know what I'm saying? It's it's he's not really doing any real acting. But who cares when you look good, right? Who cares? <laughs> I definitely feel like this first example screams pretty privilege. And I feel like it just goes to show you that people with pretty privilege, how they don't even intentionally have to do anything or intentionally are trying, like begging for attention, how it just naturally comes and how certain things just fall into your lap with no effort. And that's crazy because he's really, he really found and worked his way into the industry where he did not have to do the same amount of work as 
the next person has and i definitely think he 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 benefits from colorism as well but that is so wild because do you know how many men come out of jail and have are struggling to make it back on their feet and this man comes out and boom there you go i was really thinking hard about another example i can give y'all and what came to my mind was r b men excuse me R&B men, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, I was thinking more like probably like R&B men from maybe like the late 90s or early 2000s. Not him, y'all. Because I feel like a couple months ago, with the whole versus battle, the Omorion versus Mario, right? They really show their ass. I mean, come on, we have Ray J over here, freaking not hitting the notes properly. Love, me, pretty baby. I make one wish and I wish it all on you. And then we had Omarion over here dancing and eating a watermelon sex string on stage, thinking that he was really doing something. Oh, baby, by the way, tell me no, I won't you. Even though you're all alone, all alone when I am gone. I just want to keep you warm. Mm -mm. Oh my goodness, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, Mr. Birthday Sex, Birthday Sex. What was he doing? Oh. Disappointing. I say this to say that I feel like I'm not gonna say all, but certain RB men definitely got away with not knowing or being able to sing sing. Like there's people that can have okay vocals and like you tweak it up in the studio, whatever they do, and you sound decent, right? You, you come out singing like, oh, you can sing. So I feel like they got away with that. Shout out to Mario though, because he did he did his thing with his fine self. And <laughs> I also wanted to mention R&B singers such as, and this is like more of my time ever, what I grew up with, which is like Chris Brown, Trey Songz, August Alsina, and I'm pretty sure so, so on and so forth, you can name different ones. I really wanted to mention with this that not discrediting their talent at all. Me and you not gonna sit here, right? And pretend like that them being, probably like two out of three being deemed pretty boys, and then I guess for Trey Songz, Say he was more of like a sex symbol. We're not gonna sit here and act like that, that like that didn't help their careers big time to to take it where that their careers did. Now granted, August I've seen them fell off a little bit. But we're not gonna act like Trey Songz and Chris Brown's longevity of their career and the amount of success, them being deemed more attractive to society, that didn't help their career. I'm not gonna discredit their hard work or their talent. That's not what I'm trying to do. But you gotta understand, baby, who their audience is and who their demographic is. And their demographics were women. Women of all ages. And I definitely could say that this example can be used for women as well. Um, I feel like with women, it's the concept of how they push that as an artist or, or whoever you are, influencer, celebrity, behind the scenes, their thought process is you want the girls to want to be you and you want the men to want to be with you. So this can definitely be applied for women as well. And the last example that I got from Male Pretty Privilege, which I thought it was a really great example when I was thinking about it. I'm gonna be using a social media influencer, model slash YouTuber as an example. I don't know if you guys know of Clarence NYC. If you're around my age watching this, I'm, you're, I'm pretty sure you know who he is. Clarence is a, well, he started out as a model from my understanding. He was a model and he used to do club appearances. Eventually he started a YouTube channel and I feel like in the very beginning of his YouTube journey, that's when he was able to connect with another popular famous YouTuber who is now known as a very main, I would say she's pushing more of a mainstream singer, which is Queen Aisha. Yeah, they, they linked up and they did a lot of content together. Um, keep the long story short, they ended up being a couple and they had a child together. 
and they're still together to this day. So, like I've mentioned, prior to him meeting Queen Nyjah, he definitely was doing his modeling thing and he was doing club appearances and he was building a social media presence and he definitely was doing his thing on his own. Don't get me wrong, I gotta give credit where it's due because I definitely remember in high school, he was getting shit a lot when I was in high school. Girls were going crazy over him. So right there in itself, I feel like being a male model, right? Which I don't, it's IG male models as popular. We don't really talk about IG male models as much. I don't think it's really a thing. Not nah, it's a thing, but like they're not as popular as female IG, IG girls. <laughs> so I feel like right there in itself shows that he was able to build a platform strictly because he was attractive. Cause trust and believe if that man was ugly or average looking, he was not getting the amount of love and girls thirsting over him that he did. And I can even take this a little bit step forward. If you guys know, I'm not about to go into depth cause this is not like a, a T page, but, but right there. If you guys know how Queen Nyjah and Clarence really started, Queen Nyjah was actually the one who reached out to Clarence first. And she hit him with the, oh, how she constantly kept seeing him on her IG page. So she hit him up on some like wondering like what you do, girl. That was her IG crush for a minute. So she was, she was running down, trying to plot. This is where I'm gonna connect the pretty privilege with this situation. Because let's be real, if Queen Nyjah was not attractive or did not find him attractive, mind you, I told you this was her IG crush for a minute. I'm like pretty sure that she would have not hit him up on some, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm pretty sure around that time there was plenty of people that were probably going viral, was constantly, you know, she was probably constantly seeing her explore page. But it was that one who stood out to her cause she was attracted to him. But I gotta say, hey, they're doing really great. They had a son together, they're doing big things, living living, living lavish. Now I wanna get into um, women's pit privilege and just give different examples. The first one I'll say is Miss Saweetie, girly. I think we can all about to say that Saweetie is not a rapper. She's not a rapper, she's not a performer, she's not really a dancer, she's not, like she, <laughs> Nah, like I don't mean to laugh, but she's really not made for the music industry. That's what they consider industry fans, because there's no way she's made it as far as she's uh, as she has based on talent. This is where Pretty Privilege comes into play. Definitely, Pretty Privilege has helped her last as long as she has. And shout out to her team, because her team. I remember she had like a Saweetie meal. Like she was like doing her thing thing for real she was booked and busy right now i don't really know what she's doing but i, I guess because i'm not checking for her and just in case y'all think that i'm being like a hater i will show y'all some clips right now uh bae lace me with a watch the diamonds they be dancing i could better see the clock tick tock whoa that me a girl real icy that means i don't got times for girls that don't like me i be minding my own biz but they check up on me like a parent does they kid mm. How does I really feel? You don't know me and don't like me. That's a very special skill, nigga. My skin is real light, but I like my liquor dark. Let me get something with Henny if I'm chilling at the bar. A lot of fishes in the water, but I'm feeling like a shark. Like my weather from the west and my nigga from the east. I'm looking like a beauty, but I'm moving like a beast. My hair, my man can bend I switch up with my friends. Girls need me get humble, physio, but I need a mouth too. Break it back, crack it up, bendy. Me and my body like I sweat, hunting. Tell Peter I'm being 100, the ice girl still rock a fern. The fashion we kill the casualty. I think I know why they mad at me. I'm pretty up in every city, but won't hit the club unless it's a bad for me. My hair, my money come bundle. I switch up, running my front, so. Yeah. Girls see me and get humble, physio, but I don't even want to. Break it back, crack it up, bendy. Me and my body like I sweat, hunting. Tell Peter I'm being 100, the ice girl still rock a fern, the summer left. I do want to say, you guys, that those clips that I showed were pretty old. And as of right now, I know that her recent performance that I've seen was the Rolling Loud Miami concert. Um, I believe it was in like July, it was in the summertime. And I will say that performance, she actually did really well. She did way better. But I do think I still stand on my opinion where it's like she doesn't really have the it factor. She doesn't have the, in my opinion, I don't think she's extremely talented to call herself a rapper, performer. Another example of pretty privilege for women is IG models. The fact that women are able to gain some sort of clout fame and essentially become rich off of just strictly being 
a IG girl. I'm not gonna say you have to have a certain aesthetic, but there's a particular aesthetic look that women definitely try to strive for because they know that this is the current beauty standard and this is what possibly can get them either close to a high value man or essentially become like really rich or just being the next Jada Waiter or Ari, right? You can really gain a whole fan base and people that f with you just because you're pretty. Like honestly, if you dress really nice and you're given pretty face, having the certain uh, body type is just a you know little sprinkle and cherry on the top of it all. Baby, you, you, yeah. Do you know how far you could possibly go in life? You could get monetized, you could gain sponsorships. You can gain so much access. It's unfair because not everybody can gain that same access, but it's privilege for a reason. And I also wanted to mention, when it comes to IG models or social media people, right? Don't you ever realize, like, when it comes to certain of these services and products that they always tend to use women that are being more attractive? Rarely ever gives a normal woman. So, yeah, so before ending this video off, you guys, one thing that I really wanted to mention when it comes to pretty privilege is that Pretty privilege only takes you so far. And granted, it can take you far, and especially as a woman, especially as a woman. Now, hold on, before I finish what I'm saying, a male's pretty privilege and versus a woman's pretty privilege. I, <laughs> I will give that a woman's pretty privilege is a little bit different just because, quote unquote, and this is things that I've heard from men say that a, a woman's value or a bit of a woman's value, right? How they look. Men are visual creatures, so I definitely think that a woman, a bit of a woman's value, that's cause from her physical appearance. Women, we know that, so I feel like we know how, or we try to use that for our advantage. <laughs> but I feel like nowadays, that does not work. Hence, coming back to what I was saying, which was pretty privilege can only take you so far. And you can go far in life, you definitely can. But I do think that it's gonna come to a point where being pretty is not enough. I feel like I've heard this with um, men and relationships with they're like she could be bad right she could be fire great body whoop do a whoop but like if she's not offering anything else then it's like it's kind of the conversation right or what she brings to the table i know a lot of people don't like that but it is the the question of like what you bring to the table and if all you bring is prettiness how you know what i'm saying to men that's not enough i even think like with certain career positions i feel like you can't get away and, I've, I've, and this is kind of what I mentioned with um, the male R&B um, singers, some of them. And even down to like when I mentioned Sarini with her rapping skills. It, it gets you through the door. But eventually, there's going to come a point where people are going to look past that and see past that. And it's like, okay, now it's like you have to prove yourself. You know what I'm saying? Really show out and prove that, oh yeah, I have what it takes for this position. And not for nothing, if anybody hires you just because you look good, you simping big time. Like, that's the... That's some weirdness, that's weird. But it does happen, it does happen. So at the end of the day, being pretty is cool and you definitely have, yeah, advantages in life. But I definitely don't think that you should solely rely on your prettiness. And I feel like this is something with just any kind of privilege. If you can use your privilege to make opportunities for those and give opportunities for those who may not have the same benefits that you do, you should most definitely use your privilege to advantage to help others. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, press that bell button, and um, see you guys next time. <laughs>